Today we're going to talk about a kind of refutation that we call a reductio ad absurdum. Now what's a reductio ad absurdum, and why does it have such a mysterious name? Let's begin with the definition. So reductio ad absurdum is a Latin phrase that means reduce to absurdity. And that's what a reductio ad absurdum is. It's a refutation of an argument that focuses on a particular claim in that argument, either one of the premises or the conclusion. And it shows that that claim, that proposition, implies some absurdity. And since it implies some absurdity, the claim itself has to be false. Because nothing that's true can imply something that's obviously false. Only something that's false can imply something that's obviously false. And so, if you do a reductio ad absurdum on a proposition, you show that the proposition is false. And if that proposition is one of the premises or the conclusion of an argument, then you've refuted that argument. You've shown that that argument is unsuccessful. Okay, so that's a reductio ad absurdum. Let's look at some examples. So consider this argument. Premise one, the best way to fight theft is to eliminate the conditions that make it possible. Premise two, the use of a tangible medium of exchange, like cash, let's say, or gold, is a condition that makes theft possible, right? With, without a tangible medium of exchange, there can't be any theft. Conclusion, therefore, the best way to fight theft is to eliminate tangible media of exchange. Now, I've actually heard this argument before. The argument is that if all exchanges, all transactions take place electronically, let's say in a way that's traceable by your uh, fingerprint or by your retinal scan or something like that, if there's no cash, if there's no tangible medium of exchange, then we eliminate the black market and all kinds of goods and services, and we also eliminate the violent crime that's associated with stealing cash. Okay, so the conclusion of this argument might be true. In any case, it might be true for all I'm going to say here. But what I want to point out right now is that we can use reductio ad absurdum to show that premise one of this argument is false. So whatever else is true about the conclusion of the argument, premise one of the argument is false. And so the argument itself does not succeed in proving its conclusion. So why do I say premise one of the argument is false, that the best way to fight theft is to eliminate the conditions that make it possible? Well, if that were true, then think about the various conditions that make theft possible. One of the conditions that makes theft possible is oxygen or water or any of the conditions that make human life on the earth possible. Right? Without those conditions, of course, theft wouldn't be possible. So... That would imply, premise one would imply, that the best way to fight theft is to eliminate the conditions like oxygen, like water, that make theft possible. But that's clearly not the best way to fight theft. It would, of course, be a way to fight theft, but it's not the best way. So premise one implies something that's obviously false, namely that the best way to fight theft would be to eliminate oxygen and to eliminate water. That's obviously false. And so premise one itself must be false because nothing that's true could imply something that's obviously false. Okay, so that's an example of how we can refute this argument using reductio ad absurdum to show that premise one of the argument is false. Here's another example. So consider this argument. Premise, if you count long enough, you will eventually run out of numbers to count. Conclusion, therefore, counting is an activity that cannot go on forever. Now, this argument is valid, but the premise of the argument isn't true, and so the argument isn't sound. Why is the premise of the argument not true? Why is it not true that if you count long enough, you'll eventually run out of numbers to count? Well, here's a way to see that it's not true. Suppose for a moment that it were true, that if you count long enough, you'll, you'll eventually run out of numbers to count. Suppose that were true. 
Well, then there would be some last number, some greatest number. Now, whatever that number is, call it n. But now, whatever that number is, we can just add 1 to it. Right? Addition is going to def be defined over that number, that number n, whatever n is, and 1. So we can add 1 to n, and now we come up with a greater number. So if this premise were true, then it would imply something that's inconsistent with the premise, namely, that there's a larger number than n. So the premise can't be true, because it implies something that's inconsistent with the premise itself. So the premise is false, and that shows that the argument is unsuccessful. So we just did a reductio ad absurdum of the premise of our argument. Now, I just gave a couple of examples of reductio ad absurdums that work. But not every attempt at a reductio ad absurdum works. Consider this one. Premise. Some things exist even though no one is thinking of them. Conclusion. Therefore, reality exceeds the reach of the mind. There's more to reality than there is in the mind. Now, suppose someone challenges the premise of this argument as follows. They say, look, you're saying that some things exist even though no one is thinking of them. But as you're saying that, presumably you're not just mouthing the words, you're really thinking it. You're thinking that some things exist even though no one is thinking of them. But if you're thinking that proposition, then you are thinking of those things. So whatever those things are that allegedly exist, even when no one is thinking of them, well, you're thinking of them right now. And so the proposition that you're thinking, namely that some things exist even though no one is thinking of them, that proposition is not true because you're thinking of those very things right now. Those very things that exist even though allegedly no one is thinking of them. Okay, now I leave it as an exercise for you to work out and for you all to discuss with each other in the forums. What's wrong with this attempt at a reductio ad absurdum of the premise of this argument? I'll let you think about that. See you next time.